I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is DLA Piper's law librarian, Jean O'Grady, who is here to discuss the future of law firm librarianship. Welcome, Jean. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Spencer. So, Jean, if I remember correctly from my law firm days, which seems like an eternity ago, the law librarian's role was pretty much confined to traditional research and knowledge support functions. Is that a fair and true statement of the role as it was 10 or 20 years ago? Well, yes, definitely. 20 years ago, a lot of the focus was on maintaining a place called a library, and uh, librarians over the past 20 years have in fact introduced a lot of the technologies and a lot of the transformational tools uh, which have impacted both the way lawyers practice law and the way librarians support practice uh, with research tools. Uh, we have driven a lot of disintermediation uh, by giving lawyers direct access to things that they used to need to go to the library for. Um, but I think the primary change has been that librarians have become what I would call information strategists. Uh, you know, it's not enough for a law firm to have a technology strategy. They have to have an information strategy to make sure that they are getting the right business and legal information to all areas of the firm at the right cost in the right balance. So uh, it has become a much more strategic role in terms of s serving uh, the core practice of law and the business of law. Well, and so the change here, the reason why this particular role has evolved, and as you say, should continue to evolve to prepare for the future, is basically because the legal, legal marketplace has changed considerably since 10 or 20 years ago. Well, certainly, especially in the past five years, uh, the financial pressures and the change in the, in, in the way lawyers are recruited, the emphasis on efficiency, uh, has impacted the way the way we make choices. I mean, 20 years ago, I was asked how soon the law firm would have a library, this you know, the size of a phone booth, and I actually think we are approaching that that point today because there is so much digitally available, and in many ways, with the advent of iPads and tablets, lawyers have st started to get their own technology. They've brought their own, and we are looking at giving them uh, enabling tools that they can virtually have portable libraries on their iPads. And so I think it's actually very exciting. You were saying this shift, though. I was going to say part of the evolution, the need for evolution, though, was it based in part on the, the growing concern that with the new technology that you just highlighted, that lawyers may be able to do their own research and that law firms may no longer yeah. need to pay librarians to conduct legal research? You, you know, lawyers have always done their own research. I mean, that, that is sort of a myth, uh, and I, I hear it repeated quite often. Uh, lawyers, librarians have taught lawyers and maybe been able to guide lawyers into the right products, but I think at least for the past 30 years, a lot of research was done directly by lawyers because there were so many electronic products available in the marketplace. What librarians have always done and perhaps are more focused on now are doing the things that uh, lawyers cannot do. Librarians are trained to do a lot of specialized research and develop their advanced skills in uh, a analytics, you know, such as competitive intelligence. And it sounds like you're saying that there's been more of a shift to non-legal research, which is what law firm librarians are engaged in at the moment. And I, I, I've heard some people say that librarians should also think like startups. They should innovate, build, measure, and learn. Do you agree? I, again, I actually think for people who have a strategic vision that has actually been going on for quite a while, but absolutely, if a, if a if a librarian who has not yet started to do those things, uh, they, they would be in trouble. They are not delivering the right level of strategic value. But um, I have always loved analytics, and I have always measured what I was doing in all the, the law libraries that I have managed. I've, I've always tried to understand what is the value I'm bringing and how do we 
uh, g get what we're delivering to the next level. Gene, um, let me ask libraries. you this for just a second, sure. because I, I know that innovation is important, but let's face it, innovating in the law firm environment isn't exactly easy. <laughs> Lawyers aren't particularly known as innovators, so what advice would you give to gently pull a slow adopter of, say, technology into the future? I don't know that I have to do that, because I think the, the existing economic pressures are driving lawyers to need to be more efficient, to need to get uh, work product out to the client. I mean, law firms are now doing things called beauty contests where they have to compete to get business. They, they are promising to, to deliver results efficiently. And so when a lawyer uh, can uh, do, say, project planning, he can look to the library to help them plan out how to do a large project plan for a matter that involves a lot of research. So what challenges might uh, law firm librarians encounter as they prepare to become future ready? Well, I, I think one of, the, one of the biggest challenges we face is that we are still in a situation in which we are supported, we are under a lot of, there's a fair amount of financial pressure, uh, there's a proliferation of products, and so we have to make choices about what products are we going to support. Uh, we have multiple generations. We now have a generation of young lawyers who are what we refer to as born digital. And we do still have lawyers, older, well-respected lawyers, who still feel that they need to have print resources available to them. And so we have to figure out what is the right balance We don't, you know, the, you know I think one of the, the challenges is do no harm. We certainly <laughs> don't want to jeopardize the ability of a, of a lawyer who relies on print to practice law, but we have to sort of move people along in the direction. And I think, you know, as uh, many products, many digital products have become more intuitive, lawyers are able, we have begun to see um, lawyers, older lawyers adapting to some of the more advanced platforms because they don't quite, they don't involve as much training. They're easier for a lawyer to sit down and intuitively understand uh, how to do something that he considers himself as, as, you know, that's important to his practice, which is to understand his clients. And I think you hit it dead on the nail, nail on the head there by saying that uh, the learning styles, you know, certainly within a firm, they are different between attorneys, even different between uh, generations. So absolutely, that's a challenge that I think a lot of law firm librarians face in their roles as teachers, as educators. So uh, where do you see the future of the law firm librarianship uh, in the next decade? How do you see it's changing? Well, I think that we will be much more aligned with practice support. We're not going to be identified with a place called a library. Although in, in some ways, I think that there will be, a, uh, if there is something that used to be a library space, I think it may become something more like an Apple store, a place where people go to collaborate and learn about how to do things more efficiently. I mean, that's, that's the only model of the place that I, that I see as, as continuing into the future. When you say the Apple store there, I think that that creates an image to everyone of innovation. So uh, we're going to have to leave it there, Gene. But thanks so much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. That's Gene O'Grady of DLA Piper. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.